six five days. I think the model uh, breaks. I'd be willing to take a bet on that that's going to break, but it's not actually the stop-to-flow model that's breaking. Um, no. That's very hard to break. It's a very long time frame, and it can swing high and low by huge amounts. This yep. is his latest floor model, which he nailed the last few months in a row. Um, and it's a technical model. I think he said it was a technical model, um, though he, it's mixed because he also sees on-chain in there. But, yeah, it's it's using. I think it's using a lot of technical... Um, you know, mean reversion-y things. I don't know. He hasn't d- disclosed what it is, but uh, I think that's going to break. Um, I had a floor model. That broke too. Like, that pretty... You put your reputation on line if you have a floor model. <laughs> Not to break this. Well, when it breaks in all markets, um, markets can do anything, right? Um, so, um, but fortunately, he's on a, a sailing trip. So, um, he... With minimal internet access, so... <laughs> Uh, yeah, he doesn't need to like respond to um, everyone like going, are we going to do it? Are we going to do it? And it's like, well, I don't think we're going to do what? What is it? 30 something thousand move? Um, Where are we at? 58, 30, 34. We need. Yeah, yeah. That's It's not going to happen, guys. Um, sorry, but it's not. Um, not from what I'm seeing. Um, no. Nope. You know, it, any like it'd have to be a black swan. Like or a white, like reverse black swan or whatever <laughs> to do that. Um, mm. Just like there's nothing out of the norm happening here. Um, you know, it's just very constant accumulation by long term investors. It's looking healthy. It's not like this thing's going to blow out of the water. Um, and there's not enough shorts in the system to squeeze it that fast. Um, we've got longs in the system that need to cool off, and it has been. And so when you've got longs in the system, it's very hard for the price to rise quickly. You know, fast moves happen from short guys getting taken out and being forced to buy back. I mean, I don't think, uh, like I said, I've been saying for a while, Willie, I don't think this cycle, this whole kind of market cycle breaking is a bad thing. I think it's quite a good thing. Like we're hitting that stage where we have a nation state and other nation states looking and large companies looking and i i i mean volatility is fine but i think the massive run-ups and 80 percent drawdowns over two years you know i i don't think they're helpful for what we need bitcoin to do next no we would totally wreck el salvador for starters um, mm. and I, I think the size of it now it's a lot harder to have that kind of um drawdown um touch wood you know everyone can be made an idiot um by saying particular things and then it going doing the other yeah, but it's it's there's a lot of weight in the system, a lot of uh, you know it's a it's a huge amount of capital. It's not like 2017 where it was light and you could push it around, um, and there's these different demand and supply equations in in the system now, and um, so like. With the advent of futures markets, um, I think it's going to make it very difficult for us to have this sort of FOMO, um, you know, mania phase in a blow top because, um, you know, you can short this thing now. And so as this thing's going into overheatedness, it's very incentivized for you to bring in shorts into the system. Um, and you're not even trading. You can just do the market neutral cash and carry trade i'll buy some bitcoin and i'll short it and as it goes in a fomo um, i collect the massive demand for funding long positions i'll provide the other side and that that will cool the thing off and um you know like what we just saw in the maybe february to um, may zone where it had a sort of a distribution top rounded top and then a, a mini bear maybe that's more of the shape of the future around a top mini beer and then another progression up and we just keep doing that dance. Um, but we've talked about, I've talked about at least in the past many times that if we continue like that in this kind of new world of very developed futures markets and ETFs and and so forth, um, that will probably just continue like the way we have. We have different demand and supply with you know, shorting, um, we've got a lot of um, selling down from different um, infrastructure players. Like, um, you know, if you think of miners, they're an infrastructure mm-hmm. um, component and they make money and then they sell it 
to realize that money to pay for their OPEX. And the same thing with an ETF. They provide a service and then they're going to make a fee and they're going to sell it down. Um, same with exchanges, features exchanges, same with Grayscale. So it's, you know, all these different um, demand supply effects now. And it's, it's, uh, it's a new game. We didn't have that in 2017. The miners were the only game in town. And when they halved, like this step change built a bullish run and then we went into FOMO and mania and um and there was no shorting to be able to no real way you could short um and put cool down the heat of that that run up. Um so yeah it's different. I think it's very different and I've been calling this the last cycle as in um a bit like Michael the Saylor. There is it's going up forever, Laura, you know. Um it just keeps going and finds its price discovery in a Random walk. We did a fifty percent pullback. Um, you may call that a bear. I may actually think that may have been. You may have called that a bear market now, like a mini bear market. Like mm. it recovers in three months, um, rather than the standard Bitcoin bear market, which is like a nine months or more and eight. 